we do have the editor tab here at BioWords. Um, the editor is a really functioning, uh, it's a rich text editor file. You can save these files over to Microsoft Word, for example. Um, I'm going to use this as my catch point for my copy text. There's a variety of ways you can copy text and various types of text and references you can copy out of BibleWorks. If you look here under the command line, you have the copy button. Mm -hmm. And here you have lots of different options here. You can copy your verse list plus text. By the way, the verse list is this right here in the search window. And that's your search results. That's your verse list. Okay, verse list, list plus text. Copy the results search list verse. Wow. Obviously, the selected one. So whichever one you have selected. In this case, it's Matthew 1. 1 is my first one. So it's going to select just that one. Copy the browse window verses. So that's whatever's in the browse window. You can copy. Uh, we'll get to the pop-up copy window shortly. Copy the verse list, no text. So it's just a list without any verses there, which can be useful too. And then here's the copy format options. So we'll get to that here. But let's uh, let's copy the verse list, no text. And by default, uh, it's just my it's going to the clipboard. So I'm just going to go and, and paste it in. And there's my list of verses. Now that may not be the way you want it set up. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Let's go to configure that. Say we want it all to be on one line. You're putting it into a, into a paper or something like that. You probably don't want to set up with a hard return after every single verse. So let's go to copy and copy format options. And for verse list, no text. And here's the options for it then. So what to copy? By default, it's all the verses. Now notice there's check marks here in the search window. See those check boxes? You can check and uncheck items. Okay, so you can go through there and say, oh, that's significant. Yep, I'll keep that one. That one's not unchecked. So then you can choose, I only want my check verses. So you can go down through and, and preview and, and critique which ones you want to include in this copy. So, but I'll keep it at all verses. Where to copy the verse list? By default, it goes to clipboard, but you, you can send it to the last BibleWorks editor window, a new editor window, you can send it to Microsoft Word, or some other window. Yeah. So you can, do, you can set that up. The copy clipboard works well, but you can paste it wherever you wish to. Okay, then under the uh, output format options, you can add a new line after each reference, which is what we have here. Notice the sample output. Let's uncheck that box. That looks more like what we want, right? Okay, notice here it's merge consecutive references. So here, for example, in Matthew 1, 1 through 18 is there. Okay, because every single verse had that, because we searched for the word the, so. But, so you're going to have the whole range, but say you want it all separate, so you don't want to merge it, so let's uncheck that. So it shows every single verse, okay? And then frequency data. Remember we'd have sometimes if there's multiple hits in a single verse, like for example here Matthew 1.1 1, 1 has the star 5, there's 5 hits in that verse. So this checkbox is removing that information, because you may not want to include that. You can if you wish. So if you want to uncheck that, you notice here 1.1 1, 1 has star 5, verse 2 is star 3. So I probably don't want that, so oops, we're going to put that in there. Um, you notice sometimes some books, if you have a number of verses there, and uh, it'll have the FF you know, for all following, well, you can also um, check that box and uh, just say if there's more than, more than two, and uh, we want to probably have to merge it. Yeah, you have to merge the references, so that's set up that way too. But this way you can also include the FFs if, if you wish to do that. Right, that's less common than, than it used to be. Okay, and now if you have a specific output you want, how do you want to separate the chapters and the verses? Here's where you can change that. By default it's set up here uh, between verse, it's a comma, between chapter it's a colon, and a, between reference, uh, this is the semicolon. So you can change that if you wish as well. Okay, so click OK, and now I'm going to, I'm going to clear this out. This little uh, uh, box with this uh, crawl or the X in it, that clears the, clears the whole document, That's, that deletes it. So, And now I'm going to go copy and verse list, no text, clipboard, and I'm going to paste, and there it is, that's what we were looking for. Okay, so there you can change your formats. Now let's... Uh, Hoffney doesn't appear very much. Let's search for Hoffney. So this period Hoffney. And I want to get a small list of verses. I can clear out this editor window again. Okay. Um, now let's copy 
the verse list plus text. So let's copy it to the clipboard and hit paste. And let's see what we have. Okay, so this here has the verse reference in parentheses, parentheses and the version is NAU in this case. So that's what I have set up. But say I want this, I want the reference at the end of the verse. And instead, I want the ESV, even though my search was in NAU. Well, we can do that. I'm going to go to copy, and I'm copy format options. And, the, and I want the uh, copy verse list plus text. So here we're going to see, I want all verses. I'm going to copy to the clipboard. Here I have what versions to include. By default, it's results, verse list, version only. That's probably what you're going to want. If you're doing a search in Greek, you probably want to export Greek, probably. Uh, but in this case, I want to, I'm going to select these versions. I'm going to put just the ESV. You just type it in, just the uh, ESV. And then... Uh, you, have to, you have to check it, don't you? Yes. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank yes. you. Yeah. These versions, and then notice the checkbox. There's lots of different items here. Uh, for example, the interleave versions. <clears throat> what the interleave versions is, say you're exporting multiple versions, like that ESV and that Bible and the BGT, Greek text. Interleave is, on verse one, it's gonna have three versions. Verse two, all three versions. Verse three, all three versions. That's the interleave. Otherwise, it's gonna have all the verses in one version, then all the verses in the next version. Okay, so that's what the interleave does. Uh, new line after each verse. You may or may not want that. Um, user defined book names. Okay, we won't get into that right now. Um, exporting colors. Okay, if you're conducting search hits, you know how it has the, the highlighting color for search hits? If you have that checked, then that highlighting is also included when you're copying it. Otherwise, if it's unchecked, it's not. Uh, superscript numbers, you probably want to keep those. Uh, formatting bold italics, you probably want to keep it. Here we go. Place reference before the text. Well, we don't want that. We're going to uncheck that. We want to place the reference after the text. Now, you couldn't do both if you wanted both sides. We probably don't. Okay. Uh, included the verse text in quotes. No, we won't do that. Uh, interior verse numbers. No, we won't deal with that. Uh, here's how your the very bottom here, the reference format. You have the book, chapter, version, or, I'm sorry, verse, and then the version identifier. You may or may not want the version identifier. You can always remove that. You can just take that and, and get rid of that. Well, there's other tags you can include, too. I've got to include a tab on something, or I'll make it italics, or bold. You can include those things in there, too. OK, so say you want a bold reference. We can uh, go in here, I can put a beginning B, and I want to have the whole thing here as bold. So let's put a clo the closing B tag. If you're familiar with HTML, in your web documents, that's what those tags are. I like and click OK. And now I'm going to clear this editor file. Now let's go over here to our copy. Copy the um, verse list plus text. Paste. And there we go. So here's our information with the bold reference at the end. OK, and that, that will be in the ESV. OK. Any questions on that? So there's lots of different configurations you can work with. One other thing that we do need to talk about with copying is copying Greek and Hebrew. Because uh, there's different ways you can do that. Within the program, I don't know how much you know on fonts. I don't know. Uh, there's two <laughs> basic types of fonts. You have what's called a true type font, and you have a Unicode font. Uh, BibleWorks within the program uses our, our own BibleWorks created true type font. For exporting, by default, we have it set up to export in Unicode. We have the SPL Greek and SPL Hebrew fonts included in the installation of the program. Uh, um, Unicode is great for exporting. I do not like typing in it. I'd much rather type the true type. There's a lot less characters and work with it, but that's what I'm used to. Some people like typing in Unicode. I don't have to be one of them. But it's great with, with copying and pasting Unicode to send it to people because anybody can read it. You don't have to have the BibleWorks font in order to read it. It doesn't come out as gibberish. So it's great for posting on the internet that way, or for sending documents to, say, professors if you're typing up a paper, or a lot of publishers with Unicode fonts, uh, things like that. So the Unicode is great for that. Sending emails to people, you want to put in a Greek or Hebrew font, Unicode is wonderful. Because even if they don't have the SPL Greek and Hebrew, it'll still be read in, say, Times New Roman or Arial or some other font. So Now, with 
There's two ways you could set this up. I'm going to go to Tools and Options and go down here <coughs> to uh, Fonts. Now here at the top, you have, you have check boxes or radio boxes here you have to work with. You have your search window fonts, your browse window analysis window fonts, and then you have export fonts. So you want to select export fonts. At the very top, it's font sets for non-Unicode. And but that's not what we want to deal with right here. This is uh, if I'm if I'm uh, sending the true type fonts and non-Unicode, I have a setup for BW B, which is a Viborx Hebrew font, or the Viborx Greek font. But if I'm exporting Unicode, at the very bottom here, Unicode fonts export only, not for inside the program, but only to export. Notice the check boxes at the bottom. Export Greek resources as Unicode. Export Hebrew resources as Unicode. And the very last checkbox, use these Unicode settings also for the verse text. That is, we just will be exported out of the search results. These settings will override everything else. So that's what's set up by default here. So I'm going to click. Um, okay, verse, verse list or range. This is the box we were in earlier. Notice the very top, your output format options, export Unicode Greek, export Unicode Hebrew, they're grayed out. And that's because of back here at the font setting, override. this checkbox, the override. If I uncheck the override and I come back here to this exporting where we were before, notice now I can, I can check this. So I can set up specifically that I want it to be Unicode or not Unicode. So different, you can set, say, out of the browse window, I want to copy it, but I want it to be Unicode. But out of the search results, I don't want it to be Unicode. You can do that if you want to. Um, probably don't want to, to be honest with you. <laughs> but I, I would say you probably want to have all three of these checked, probably, for export. It's user defined book names. Yes, uh, that can be useful if you have to export publishers. Publishers, yep. So you're taking the SBL book names, uh, things like that. That's useful. Um, so I'm going to click OK, and uh, I am going to copy a section here of the Hebrew text. I'm just, I'm just highlighting it. I can, you can do drag and drop. Mm, I drop it right in here. Now this font, notice that font looks different than what I have here. Notice the characters look different. I mean, same letters, but the font characteristics are different. Because this right here in the browse window is the Bobworks font. This over here is the exported Unicode font. And, and at the very bottom here of the editor window, you can see what font it is. You put your cursor in there, and this happens to be the SPL Hebrew font. And you can change that. If you want to send it over you know, to some other font, you can do that in that configuration. So. Okay? So by default, it's not to export in Unicode. All right? Yes, sir. So if you save that now, it's going to be an R RTF file, is that? This is this here. The editor is an RTF file. Okay. Yes. Yes. And then you can open Microsoft Word. 